Hello everyone, I'm Gary Lavach along with Mike Joseph. This is Behind the Mic and we welcome you once again as the Lafayette Leopards will take on the Georgetown Hoyas on Saturday afternoon at 12.30. These are the two teams that do not have a Patriot League win as of yet. The Hoyas are 0-2, Lafayette 0-3. But Georgetown is coming off, I don't know whether you can have moral victories, but they play a really tough Fordham team. They play against the guy who has the most touchdowns in the USA uh, coming in, and that's Chase Edmonds. They hold him to no touchdowns, and they hold Fordham, which is the number four offensive team in the nation. They hold them to 17 points. So if we're going to talk about uh, Georgetown, I guess we have to start with their defense. Uh, we have to talk about a, t a defense that is attacking and is uh, opportunistic. And uh, in that game, there were 10 turnovers total. Mm -hmm. uh, and the fact that they blocked two punts, so that's somewhat of an extension of their defense. They have a lot of turnovers. They take the ball away through the air, uh, which Lafayette likes to do, throw the football. So uh, if they're going to try to do something, I think it's try to get Drew Reed or Blake Sirfoss to move his feet, get out of the pocket, and maybe cause some turnovers. And turnovers is what they do do. As Mike indicated, they have 11 interceptions on the season, seven fumble recoveries, and six block kicks. Three of them are punts. Three of them are place kicks. So they are certainly a, a football team defensively that will really get after you, as Mike indicated. Uh, Fordham scored 14 quick points in that ball game. did not score a point in the second half except for a field goal, and that turned out to be uh, the winning points in the ball game. Offensively, Mike, they've lost their quarterback, Tim Barnes. He is out for the season. So they have gone to a sophomore and a freshman. Not exactly sure why they went to the freshman in the, in the second half last week. Clay Norris did not play badly at all in the first half. He's only a sophomore. Uh, but they did indeed go to Brock Johnson in the second half. Uh, I think they may have had a plan coming in, mm -hmm. saying, listen, we're going to play Clay, and then we're going to go to Brock giving them both an opportunity to find out coming out of the uh, out of the game who played better. And I thought they both played pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, both had a, a, a decent completion percentage. Um, they threw a couple interceptions here or there, but I think they were looking for an answer offensively. And how many teams have we played, we just said it, yeah. that have not had their starting quarterback. So I think this is an opportunity uh, kind of segueing into Lafayette's defense. A chance for them, obviously, to get off the schneid a little bit. They have been not good in the last three weeks. And they certainly need something positive to happen. Losing seven straight ball games, they're going to go into a bye week. And boy, it wouldn't it be nice to go into this bye week with a win. So they need something positive. You and I talked about taking something positive away from Saturday's ball game. And uh, I think we both came to the conclusion that Mike Dunn was the positive. Absolutely a positive. He was my player of the game. He did it in every which way. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. He runs with power. He seems to hit the hole a little bit quicker. Um, you know, and to take nothing away from Deshaun and, and also CJ, but um, the, the offensive line just didn't gel and hasn't gelled all season. But Dunn seemed to have a little bit of a spark. Uh, seemed to be a Frank Tavani kind of running back. And, uh, you know, any, anything positive right now in the running game, you're going to look to uh, something. And I think we're going to look right to Dunn. He's, he's, he's a guy that I think down the stretch can really help the Leopards. You have a gut feeling about this football game. Two teams desperate for a win. Georgetown's lost four in a row. We've lost seven in a row. Uh, what's kind of your gut feeling about the Leopards this week? Well, my gut is that they I, – I, I hope they're going to come out with passion. They, got, they have to come out. I think the team – that comes out with a little bit more excitement and holds that excitement through for 60 minutes is a team that's going to win. This is a team, uh, Georgetown, that only scores 17 points the entire year in the fourth quarter. Lafayette's problem has been giving up points late and wearing down. So I think if they can get some early three and outs, which they did against Bucknell, and again, right there, 21-17 mm -hmm. going into the fourth quarter, this is a team that has struggled to put points, uh, not just in the fourth quarter, but 48 points the entire year in the second half. So here's an opportunity, but I think going back to passion, Lafayette's got to come out and say, listen, we're on our home turf. Georgetown's in our house. This is our house. We've got to protect it. On paper, this looks like it's going to be a very low-scoring football game. Frank has never lost eight straight games in a row. It's a football team desperate for a victory. We hope that that's what we'll be watching on Saturday afternoon at 12.30. You can watch the ball game, of course, on the Lafayette Sports Network. Mike will be there. I'll be there. We hope that you will be there, too. This has been Behind the Mic this week. Thanks for joining us.